Hello and welcome to another edition of Virtual Vines. We're happy that you all are joining us. This is our step September edition and we're really excited. We have um, not only a couple of great wines that we want to talk to tonight, but we're also joined um, by a really great restaurant, Despagna Restaurant and Tapas Bar in um, out of Princeton. And they have brought an amazing selection of food for us tonight to pair with these wines. We're going to get a little bit more into the food and the food pairings in a little bit, but I want to talk a little bit about the wines that we're going to be featuring tonight. So we're really excited. This is our new 2013 Vidal Blanc and our 2012 Cabernet Sauvignon. If you have it, go ahead and start opening up the Vidal Blanc and get that one ready for the tasting. While you're doing that, I want to um, talk to you guys a little bit about some of the upcoming events we have here at the winery. So we are really excited. Um, our fall festival is coming up this weekend, September um, 28th, 27th and 28th. And it's our annual harvest fall festival. There's lots of stuff going on. There's hay rides. Um, tour, B tours, um, winery tours, there's kids activities, so it's a fun event for everybody in the family. There's arts and crafts vendors. Your ticket price includes a wine tasting, so you get to sample all the wines when you're here as well. We also have a really great um, food truck that's gonna be here. Um, one of our outlets, Whispers of Spring Lake, is bringing their food truck all the way from the shore, so they're gonna be here all weekend. And it's a really, really fun event for the whole family, and that goes on from 12 to five. And then we also are really excited to announce our first, it's, I guess it's our first chef event um, of the fall. We're gonna be doing it with Despagna of Princeton. They're gonna be here. And it's a really fun, unique twist on our chef events. As always, our winemaker Scott will be here um, talking about the wines and the food pairings. But um, we're also doing sort of a combination food demonstration and chef dinner because part of the menu is um, their famous paella, and they're actually gonna be making it live here at the winery. So we're really, really excited about that. And so you're gonna learn a little bit more about how the food is prepared and how they make it, in addition to pairing it with food. So that's really fun. Our um, wine and food events here are always really, really popular. Yeah, that'll be on the 5th of October. And that's October 5th, um, one o'clock. There are some tickets available. So if you would like to, you can go to our website, oldjerkcellars.com and purchase some tickets. Reservations are required. So again, it's a really fun day out at the winery. There start, starts at one o'clock and you can spend some time here at the winery afterwards as well. Correct. And then, this is something new for us too. We're actually gonna be doing another wine event at Despagna in Princeton. This is going to be a wine and food dinner with our winemaker, Scott. So Scott is gonna be there doing a presentation in the beginning, talking a little bit about our wines, how they're made, um, and then following, there's gonna be a dinner that you guys are yep. gonna be doing pairing yes. with, with the wines. Um, and that starts at? Around 6.30. Around 6.30, yes. okay. <laughs> and if you would like to purchase tickets, you're gonna to have to do that through um, the restaurant, so you can give the restaurant a call and you can get your tickets for that too, and that's gonna be a really fun and educational evening. Yeah, well, just the town of Princeton is just a great town to deal with too. It's, it's beautiful over there. I love going yeah. over there. So, uh, I guess I should mention the next Virtual Vines that will be coming up on November 20th. That's gonna be our Thanksgiving edition, and we're going to be featuring the 2013 Malbec um, that we're really, really excited about, and then our 2013 Dry Riesling. Yes, both of them very good, very crisp, very flavorful. So both that will be our um, Thanksgiving edition, November 20th. So make sure to grab your, your tasting packages for that. So we wanna start talking about the wines. Um, the Vidal Blanc, this is the first wine we're gonna talk about tonight. Um, really interesting, started doing a little bit of research on Vidal. I knew a little bit about it. I knew that it was a hybrid. Um, French-American hybrid. I also knew that it grows really well in this region of the country. It's very cold hardy, um, is very high production. It's, it's not only cold hardy, it's got a very high yields onto it, but it's also very disease resistant, which is, helps here on the East Coast because we have that humidity. You know, we have the heat, but we don't have a dry heat. So we always have the humidity, which contributes to mildew and and a bunch of other powdery mildew, downy mildew and stuff where this is very resistant to it. Right, and so it, it's very, very popular in the Northeast. 
Um, you'll see it a lot in New, in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, New York. It's very popular Finger in the Finger Lakes. Lakes as well. But also to um, in Canada where they make ice wine out of it. But what I thought was really interesting when I was reading is that it was developed in the 1930s by a wine grape breeder, Jean-Louis Vidal. And he designed this grape variety to be used to make cognac. And I just thought that was really interesting because it was something that had a very sort of specific plan for this grape, but because it, it, it grows so well in very difficult climates, it became very popular. Mm -hmm. And then apparently, too, it is also grown just 500 miles south of the Arctic Circle in Sweden, where it's also used to make ice wine. Mm -hmm. So not a lot of grape varieties are going to be able to survive in those type of climates. So this is a very unique grape varietal. Yeah. It's got a little bit stiffer, like a stronger skin onto it. So when you're doing an ice wine, um, you can leave it on the vine. It's going to hang, and it's not going to break down quickly because of you know the elements and stuff where it will freeze Correct. and it will hold on. Where some of the other grape varieties have a very thin skin onto them, so once they freeze, they split. They split. And they fall off the vines, but this will hold on. So it makes it really nice. Right. So. Um, that was one of the more interesting things I thought about. And yes, I did read that about the grape skin. I thought that was very, very interesting. Now, it's also very, it has a lot of inherent acidity, which also lends itself to being made into a sweeter style. Mm -hmm. They, well, into the ice wine, they make it where it has the acidity, so that with the acidity and the sugar making the ice wine, it balances that out nicely, so it doesn't, doesn't taste too, too sweet. Right. This one, I think the 2013, um, differs a little bit from the 2012, I think. As we're going to taste it, you guys are going to see. This one, to me, has a, a nice amount of body. It has a, a crisp acidity, but I think what's really nice about this wine is I think it can stand up to a lot of different types of food because it has some nice body with it. The color, um, if you're just sort of looking at it, Scott always talks about sort of looking at it against a white tablecloth or a white piece of paper. It is, has a very sort of, you know, lemony, yellow, it's very bright. Um, on the nose, you get a lot of citrus qualities. Again, very bright on the nose. Definitely get a little bit of that grapefruit. Anything in particular that you you anything in particular in the production of this wine specifically because it's Vidal maybe as opposed to some of the other white grapes? This one I do a little bit a um, little bit different because it's the Vidal Blanc. It's a very hearty characteristic to it. It stands up. Um, I know one of the sister plants to it is the Rayon Dior. Mm -hmm. It's one of the clones off of it. The Rayon Dior will have a sort of a, a spicy characteristic to it because we have the Rayon Dior planted here on the property as well. So that one will have a little bit more of a spice to it where the Vidal pulls up a little bit more of that grapefruit characteristic to it. So this one here, when I do the fermentation, I use a yeast called the Premier Cuvée, um, which is a very hearty yeast. It can withstand the colder temperatures because what I'd like to do is I start this one off at about 53 degrees, get the fermentation going. When it gets around about 15 bricks, I bring it up to about 73 degrees just to get a little bit more going on to it. After I hit that and I bring it back to around 10 bricks, 9 bricks, I bring the temperature back down to about 61, 62 degrees, and that's where I finish it off at. Um, that's when I'll start to add, you know, the clarifying agents to it and stuff, and I'll start, you know, getting it cleaned, getting all the stuff out of it. And what I do is I rack it off early. As soon as fermentation is done, I rack it off the dead yeast as fast as possible. What it does is it keeps it real clean, real crisp, and it doesn't get that that aftertaste to it, where mm -hmm. this will finish really clean. It does, it like finishes a, Sort of like that grapefruit characteristic mm -hmm. to it, very clean on the palate. Little hints of, a little bit of apricot into it, but mm -hmm. mostly a lot more citrus characters to it. So as Scott mentioned, one half of the hybrid is Rayon Dior, the other half is Uni Blanc, uh, which is also known as Treviano. So it's an interesting, it's an interesting combination. But yeah, definitely a lot of grapefruit, nice acidity. I think one of the things that's really nice about the Vidal um, is that it does have some body. So even though it is a white wine, it's maybe not as light. Yeah, 
It definitely, if, if you're looking in terms of weight of white wine, I would consider this more sort of medium bodied white. It's about 12% in alcohol, mm -hmm. so it's going to be able to stand up a lot of, against a lot of your foods, whether or not you're doing something a little bit heavier onto it. Um, having something that has a little bit of spice onto it, perfectly fine with this. So the, now we get to do something really fun. We get to talk about the food. Um, so again, this is Despana from Princeton, and they've brought a really um, awesome assortment of different Spanish, tradition, very traditional Spanish food today. And one of the things that we were talking a little bit about before the broadcast is sort of maybe people's understanding of Spanish food, how it differs maybe from what they're thinking in terms of you know, Mexican or other types of Spanish food, that it, the spices are a lot different. Um, and that it's a very, you know, a strong, has a strong food and wine culture. So the wine, the food is meant to be um, paired with wines. And you guys brought an amazing selection. And first we're going to talk about maybe some of the foods that you brought to pair with the um, Vidal Blanc. Sure, absolutely. Well, first of all, thank you very much for absolutely. inviting us and having us here. Um, today we did bring um, a garocha, which is a goat cheese. Um, it's a little bit creamier in texture, kind of a nutty, buttery flavor. Um, it'll pair really nicely with the acidity in the white wine that we have. Um, we also brought gambas al ajillo, which is a garlic um, butter shrimp dish. Um, we serve it as a tapas as our, at our cafe. Mm -hmm. So um, we will just pass it out here. And like Kelsey was talking about, some of the characteristics of the food, a couple of things that she mentioned was the creaminess of the cheese, of the garocha cheese, um, and having a little bit of a nutty characteristic. Um, maybe being a little bit richer, and that's really nice when you have a, f a wine like the Vidal Blanc because it has a lot of um, acidity, which helps to sort of cut through maybe some of the buttery, richer aspects of the food, and it makes for a nice balance. And so what is the sauce that's on the shrimp? The shrimp is going to be done in a uh, white wine with uh, garlic. Right. Uh, so it's gambas al ajillo. Um, and then it also, to finish it off, we use a guindilla pepper, which is going to be a hot pepper. It's not going to give it too much spice, but just a little bit of a little bit of a kick. Okay. So it'll have a nice uh, flavor to contrast the uh, smoothness of the wine. Excellent. So, and one of the things we were talking about too was what I thought was really neat about the selection of cheese that you guys brought. I mean, I know a lot of people are probably familiar with Manchego and things like that, but these are maybe some other types of cheese that if you're looking to sort of, you know, change up your palate a little bit, try something different. Um, you know, try maybe some of these other Spanish cheeses that you're not so familiar with. So you said this one was garocha? Yes, what we're trying with the white one is the garocha. We also have a Valdeon, which is a mixed um, mixed milk blue cheese. Okay. That'll go really nicely with the red and probably the white too. And then we also have a Caña de Cabro, which is another goat cheese. Cool. Well. And it looks like it has a pretty yeah. thick rind on it too, which is interesting. Are these cheeses that you'd be able to find sort of easily, or you have to really search them out at specialty these, places? No, these are um, these are actually pretty popular cheeses. They're really growing in popularity. Um, Spanish food in general is really taking off uh, in the U.S. Um, but uh, these are the most. Uh, the Caña de Cabra is one of our most popular cheeses that we offer in the restaurant. Uh, it's one of our top sellers in Princeton and New York. Um, the Garocha has become very very popular as well. And Valdeon has um, always been uh, a very popular blue cheese, so you get a lot of people that do like their blues, you have some that don't, but uh, it's a very, very nice cheese. It's smooth for a blue cheese, so it pairs really well. So can you guys just give us, uh, talk to us just a, a little bit about the restaurant itself, um, the type of food? Oh, wait, we do have a question. Michael, what items, what, uh, what items on your menu pair well with Vidal? Uh, on the menu, we have a lot. Um, the Vidal, I would recommend any of the seafood dishes. Um, you know, uh, we've got uh, salmon on the menu. We have codfish. Um, so there's plenty of seafood, but also the paella too. Uh, yeah. We brought with us today paella. Our style of paella is from the Castilian region. Uh, so it has socarrat, which is caramelized rice in the bottom. Um, this particular one is the mixta. It's got a mixture of seafood and meat. So we have our traditional chorizo. Um, so chorizo is Spanish sausage, uh, it uses paprika for seasoning, uh, it's going to give it that red color. We have chicken in there, shrimp, and Chilean sea bass, which has a nice uh, little oily flavor to it, so uh, it really gives the paella a lot of flavor. Mm -hmm. um, and then the sofrito that's in there has saffron, so 
it's not going to be super, super spicy with the saffron. Um, really, uh, Spanish food is more flavorful yes. than what most people, when people think of Spanish food, they think of a lot of Latin American uh, food. Uh, this is authentic Spain, so it's a lot more about flavor um, than, than spice. Correct. The, Which, the shrimp is delicious with the Vito. It's, you know, it doesn't really have that spice. You were talking about this pepper that was on there. I don't feel feel any of the pepper, but it's got full of flavor, and it's great with oh, yeah. the Vito. It cleanses the palate greatly, so you can taste, go back and forth between the cheese and the shrimp. Very good. Yeah, and the cheese too, just sort of tasting it. Um, it's definitely very creamy. Um, I definitely do get a little bit of that nuttiness, which is nice. And that's gonna pair really well with the acid in this wine. Hopefully all of you have some food too, because we feel like a little <laughs> awkward sort of sitting here and eating on camera. So hopefully all of you at home are having food as well. <laughs> And if you are, please <laughs> make sure to uh, send us a t um, tweet. Let us know what foods you're pairing with the wine tonight. Obviously, we have these amazing foods here tonight from Despagna, but we'd love to know what you're pairing with the Vidal and the Cabernet tonight. So you can tweet us at Old York Cellars, or you can use hashtag virtual vines. Let us know what you like. Let us know what you're pairing um, and what you're having for dinner, and maybe even send us a picture of you eating so that we don't feel so bad sitting here eating on camera. Yeah, but the, the Vito pairs well with anything. I mean, anything that you guys get out of the refrigerator, it, it'll pair very well with. Um, so while we're sitting here talking, make sure to open up your Cabernet because that is the next wine that we're gonna try tonight. And as we're sitting here, why don't you guys just talk, because we were, we were talking about that before, why don't you guys talk a little bit about the restaurant? Tell us, you know, what, where you guys are, what you do, sort of. I know you guys have a lot going on there just besides, you have a market. I mean, you have all kinds of really cool stuff going on. Sure, so. sure absolutely. So we're located in downtown Princeton. We're on Nassau Street um, in Olden, right off the campus there. We have a little market downstairs where we sell all of our imported um, Spanish foods from chocolates to almonds and olive oil to paella ingredients and yep. everything in between. Um, you can find all of our cheeses and our meats there, plus a whole lot of extra ones as well that we did not bring today. Um, upstairs, we have a full-service lunch and dinner restaurant. There's um, plenty of hot and cold tapas on our menu. We also have um, salmon entrees and Sandwiches chicken. Sandwiches for lunch as well. So. Yes. Um, we also do full-service off-site catering. We can host special events at our restaurant as well. Um, so you guys do it all. And in fact, we had a customer who came in um, the other week, at, last weekend actually, and I was talking to her and I was telling her that you guys were going to come out for the virtual vines and that you guys were going to be here for the chef event. She was like, oh, I buy all of my olive oil there. So it's really neat that you guys not only have a market, and, but you are a restaurant too. Because a lot of times people go into a restaurant and they're like, oh, I really like this cheese or I really like this food, mm -hmm. but you don't really know where to go to get it. So you guys are 90% right. right of our <laughs> ingredients are actually available in the market. So everything in this paella, um, you can pretty much buy in the market, uh, take it home, make it yourself. That's perfect. Um, the staff knows exactly what's being served on the menu, um, whether they're in the restaurant or downstairs in the market. Uh, we've got the Old York Cellars wine, so you can pick up the Despagna food and your favorite wine and um, put it together. Uh, and then we also have a nice, really nice key about the space is we have an outdoor terrace, so uh, overlooks scenic Nassau Street. So that's, that's great. Can you, you order it, can you order in as well? And Yeah, it's a full service restaurant upstairs and then you can do takeout or catering uh, through the market, so. Okay. Right. That's perfect. Yeah, so you can, you can go buy and pick it up and go out on a picnic someplace and Absolutely. Mm -hmm. go. Yeah, <laughs> or just some cheese yeah. and fruit and go on your way. Yeah, exactly. So the next wine that we're going to talk about tonight is a really, really fantastic wine. This is our 2012 Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, we were just talking quickly before the broadcast started and we were saying this is one of the wines that was in the tank um, when we were hit here with Hurricane Sandy. Yeah, so was, I'll, I'll sort of get into that a little bit when I go talking about the wine and stuff like that. But yeah, this is another one of those Hurricane Sandy wines that I talk about. Um, but if you're not familiar, I mean, I'm sure pe most people are familiar with Cabernet. Obviously, um, it has its home in Bordeaux. Um, it is one of the grapes used to produce Bordeaux wines. Um, it is called the king of all red grapes. It's probably the, next to Merlot, is probably the one red grape that people are most familiar with. 
But what I think is really interesting about the Cabernet is that depending, it's grown in so many regions all over the world, but it varies so different depending on where it's grown. It, it, it has so many different styles to it. It pulls up green peppers. It pulls up blackberry characteristics. It can pull up tobacco characteristics. Um, it has just nutty hazelnut characteristics to it that it can pull up just because of different places that it grows. You know, the, the, the terroir, you know, yeah. the, the soil, the sun, the conditions, the weather, everything plays a role, how it ripens and stuff. But it's, you know, you have the different clones, you have the Cabernet Sauvignon, you have the Cabernet Franc, you have different clones of that you can have, root stocks that you can mm -hmm. have it on, all play a different role in how it's going to end up. Yeah, and it obviously, um, it's a great wine for aging. It has a lot of um, inherent sort of tannins with it, which do aid in, in um, aging as well as a nice, a nice backbone. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the reasons it's used for blending a lot of the times is because Cabernet does have a very strong backbone. It has a nice acid component to it, so it tends to do well with wines that maybe are a little bit softer, so things like Merlot, it's often blended with because Merlot has a tendency to be the, really the soft. The Merlot or the Petit Shiraz, mm -hmm. some people will blend a little bit of Cabernet into it because the Petit Shiraz doesn't have quite the tannins to it. Right. It's got a lot more fruit character forward to it, so they'll put a little bit of Cabernet into it just to give it some backbone. And most of the time it's going to be full-bodied. Um, obviously, sometimes maybe the growing region it might be a little bit more medium-bodied, but for the most part it's full-bodied. Um, it has a lot of um, blackberry, cherry, a lot of those flavors with it, but then like Scott was saying, it can have a lot of sort of spiciness to it as well. Maybe even going a little bit in that green pepper mm -hmm. sort of range. Um, a lot of leather aromas, you hear people describing that a lot too. Yeah, Tobacco. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, I you always, brought the wine I, wheel. I, we I love the wine wheel. Yeah, I found the actual thing instead of my photocopies that I usually deal with. But no, I always emphasize when you're doing tastings and stuff, People read on the back of the labels that certain wines have, you know, leather characteristics yeah. to it, uh, blueberry. And no, there's not know, leather blackberry. in it. Yeah, not, it's blackberry characteristics to it, or like the Vidal has that citrus characteristics to it. Pick up one of these, you know, you can find them on the internet. They, they sell them in books and stuff like that. Buy the book, it's a couple bucks. Get one of these. It, will go right down from your fruity characteristics down to a tropical fruit. You can get the It'll pineapple help you narrow down. It helps you narrow down yeah. those flavors when you look in the back of the label and you wonder, how do these people come up with these flavors? It's not injected with it. It's just when you're fermenting with a certain type of yeast or your certain temperatures that you're fermenting at, you'll get up the full bouquet of the, mm -hmm. the style of the wine that's in there. So I always recommend you know, getting one of these, have it at home. You know, even when you're doing it with the foods and stuff like that, people wonder about like your different cheeses and stuff like that. One of these could even help you with you know your flavors of your cheeses and stuff and getting the styles to it. Oh, we have a question for Scott. Is this one of your favorite cab vintages? And who's that we who's that from tonight? Oh, NJ Wine with me. Awesome. We're happy to have you back. Oh, NJ Wine. NJ Wine, wine Girl. girl. So, so what is, is this one of your favorite vintages? This is close. This has been one of those difficult ones. We talk about the Hurricane Sandy um, wines and stuff. We had that problem with the, uh, or not the problem, but we had that happen with the Malbec and stuff. And we had the Malbec in tank and, you know, we were without power for eight days um, to the minute. Well, this was Who was tanks. counting? Yeah, who was Nobody counting? Nobody was counting. No, nobody was counting. It was to the minute, believe me. But this one here, the Cabernet, was in the tanks during that. Uh, so we lost the power. The only thing I could do was do the punch downs and the pump overs because we were running on generators. But, so we didn't have enough power to run the press and the crushers and all that so, sort of stuff. So this Cabernet here ended up being on the skins for 31 days. <laughs> so 31 days I spent in the tanks because I was looking to press it at about 22. And yeah. then we got hit with Sandy and so it stayed in the tank a bit longer. So this was uh, 31 days in the skins uh, during fermentation. Came in about 25 and a half bricks. So at the end product, it ends up being about 15% uh, alcohol. And it's about 3.55 in pH. So the pH is a little bit on the higher side. So what it does is it softens up. So it makes it feel a little bit softer in the backbone. Right. So it doesn't have that real acidic characteristic to it. Give it a little bit more softer character to it. I pull up a little bit more of a, like a blackberry characteristic on this Cabernet, where we talk about the different flavors to it and stuff. 
I pull up a little bit more, this one here has a little bit more fruit forward. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can definitely see that, I mean, even the color, it definitely, you know, spent, it's got, it's an amazing dark garnet color. It's, you can tell, I mean, and all that color is coming from, you know, is being extracted from the skins. Um, so you can definitely see that it's, it's yeah, this one I very use nice the, and rich in color. The past year red was, is one of my favorite yeast to use because it gives it that full characteristic to it on a style. Um, ferments down really good. It's a strong characteristic yeast. Like it's a, a good, this was a cool fermentation too. This was started at around about 60. I brought it up to about 65 degrees during the fermentation and then I brought it back down to 60 to finish up and it came out real nice. Very fruit forward for a Cabernet. And you, I mean, you get it the minute you stick your nose in the glass, like you just, it's like boom. I mean, it hits you sort of that fruitiness. Lots of cherry, mm -hmm. lots of blackberry. I'm getting like a little bit of, a little bit of spice, nothing like nothing super. Like that, yeah, nothing not like that green pepper characteristic. No, that, no. You know, everybody talks about Cabernet, but you get a little bit of that spice. But yeah, a lot of the, you know, the smoky cherry characteristic mm -hmm. to it. It's all done on American oak compared to where the Vidal is all stainless steel. The Cabernet is put on American oak. So it has a little bit of an oak finish onto it, but it's not overpowering. I always mm -hmm. like the, the wines that have a lot of fruit forward, let the fruit speak for itself. Again, that fruit forward characteristic sort of follows you onto the palate, but I think that, that, like you said, it's a little soft, but you still have enough acidity that everything kind clean. of stays in the balance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it finishes nice and clean. Even though it's 15.5% or 15% alcohol, you don't get that, you, d you don't seem like it's there because it's nicely balanced between the pH and the total acidity. Very nice I mean, and I could be crazy too, but I think this is a very, what I would consider a very sort of friendly Cabernet. So maybe people who tend, have a tendency not to like Cabernets as much because they think they're a little bit tannic, a little bit too sort of heavy. I think the, it having a little bit of a fruit forward characteristic makes it a little bit friendlier. Yeah. And with, that, with it being not so heavy on the yolk, it makes it a little bit more friendlier as well too so for somebody who's starting to drink reds. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody goes from the whites and eventually they switch over into reds once your palate matures. But this is one of those ones that you could you know, serve and it's gonna be nicely styled. So again, I know you guys <laughs> knew, oh wait, we do have a question. What kind of disease, of disease? Disease pressure do you have at the harvest? At harvest? Um, I wouldn't call birds a disease, um, <laughs> but that is- uh, It is, it can be a that, plague. That is one of our worst things here. Uh, we net everything. Yeah. Everything is netted um, from top to bottom, inside and out. Birds are our biggest problem yeah. uh, at this time of the year. We Most have people them. think it's deer. Most yeah. people go, oh, you know, do you guys have a big problem here with the deer? And it's like, well, if that was our only problem. Yeah, the deer sort of bother us in the springtime because the leaves are one of the first things that butt out. So it's the first green things that the deer actually get a chance to see. Once they, you know, start browsing on the rest of the, you know, plants and flowers and everything else that people plant, they start going to that. But then, you know, in fall time when we're looking for harvest, it's mostly birds. Um, birds will really devastate us. And we sort of have, with the disease, this year we had a little bit more rain than what we yeah. sort of wanted. So we ended up with a little bit of downy mildew. Um, the Riesling has a little bit of downy mildew. The Chardonnay has some downy mildew. But we're, we're getting through it. The grapes, the rest of the harvest, everything that we, we've come in, fruit has been great, which the downy mildew affects the leaves. It doesn't affect the fruit. So we've been lucky where, you know, the fruit is already in, it's there. Um, it's not going to get any, anything happening to it where, you know, the downy mildew is affecting the leaves. And one of the other things that I guess, uh, Gary, our vineyard manager here, um, was having to deal with this summer were the beetles. Yeah. Japanese beetles this they year were, were very, a big were very bad. And I was hearing that from everybody through New yeah. Jersey. Long Island, everybody was having a problem with the Japanese beetles and that this year. Sort of depends. I mean, they're there every year, but I guess this year in particular was just this a particularly is, bad year. This is probably about the worst I've seen them in six years. Yeah. Um, I've seen them this bad before, but not like. And what I thought like was interesting this. too is they didn't like every variety. No, they they definitely like <laughs> honed in on yeah. like certain yeah, certain, certain varieties. Certain varieties yeah. they love, and uh, it's it's funny because they like the money ones. They like uh, you know the expensive <laughs> ones. 
you know, because the, the Cabernet plant is very expensive to buy as a as a yearling, and that they like that know, one. They like Cabernet. They they will chew that up in an instant. Yeah. They're like, can't you move somewhere else? Yeah. I mean, I, I would like them to be in the Marshall Foch that we use for our Ruby Port. I would like them to be in there because it's a very dense canopy, so they could lighten up the canopy for me. But no, they, no. no, no. They like to go to the, the cab, the Riesling. Yeah, they like those. And again, that becomes a problem because just similar to sort of the mildews and things like that, they, they go after the leaves. And so obviously you need, you you need, need the leaves. Yeah, you need to 18 have, leaves per cluster in order to ripen that cluster of vines for fall time. Yep. So yeah, when you're missing leaves, harvest it's ripen, a problem. ripeness goes a little bit later than what you want. So why don't you guys talk to us a little bit about some of the foods that you brought um, to pair with the cab tonight. Sure, absolutely. Well, we figured um, our meat tray would go really well with any of the, or the red wine here. We brought a chorizo, which is the traditional Spanish um, sausage that Mike mentioned. It's flavored with paprika. That gives it that spiciness and a little bit of the red color. We also brought um, a salchichon, which is also a Spanish sausage. It's from the, um, we use an Iberic, Iberian, Iberian pig that it, it's um, uh, native to Spain and it's, it eats off of only acorn diet. So we so use very it, particular, very particular, very very particular, and we use uh, we don't use it, but uh, it is made with uh, black peppers and salt, a little bit of garlic in there. Then we also have our lomo, um, which is just a dry cured pork loin. Interesting. Um, there's no, it's not a sausage; it's just the actual. And okay. I think that's going to pair um, quite beautifully with this particular wine because uh, that is the biota. So that's the 100% acorn fed black footed pig from Spain. Um, so it's got a little bit of a, um, uh, an oily flavor to it, okay. which will pair well with that uh, red wine. Um, and I can certainly pass down. And again, all of these are available in the restaurant. All of these are available in the restaurant, in the market, um, in our Princeton location, New York location. Uh, we can also uh, ship it out as well. Okay. Um, you can buy the whole thing, cut it up at home. Um, the way we have these uh, presented here is just sliced. Mm -hmm. um, so this pairs really well with the wine. Uh, get a little bit of rustic bread with it, a um, little bit of olive oil or honey. So this is just a cured ham as opposed to like a sausage. Correct. It's supposed to the sausages. Yeah, this is just going to be the cured ham, the loin. So it's going to be pretty lean. Um, uh, and how does this differ, differ from, and I just like to use maybe some of the things that people are most familiar with. So how would this sort of differ from like your Serrano, which is what most people are probably familiar with? Well, Serrano is going to be just a, a white pig. Okay. Um, it's no special diet. Um, and generally the Serrano hams are going to be aged about 12 months to 24 months. So, um, you know, uh, a lot of people are going to think that the jamon is uh, like a prosciut, but it's going to be, it's not as aged. Right. Uh, prosciutto's not aged as much. The jamons are aged much, much longer. Okay. Um, yeah, but it seems milder than a prosciutto. Yeah, because of the aging, it does have a milder, milder yeah. flavor to it. Yeah, it's very nice. So this, this is uh, probably one of the most popular meats um, that we have for the cured meats. Now, is it smoked? Uh, this is um, not smoked. This uh, lomo loin is um, just um, pressed in a casing uh, and then just cured. So one of the interesting things too, this one, Scott was talking about, you know, prosciutto. I don't. This doesn't seem quite as salty. Yeah. You do get a little bit of the salt, but I, yeah. prosciutto is, is typically a lot saltier. Right. So this, this is, is really nice. This is the loin too of the of the pig. So it's not going to be your prosciutto is going to be the leg or front or back leg. Mm -hmm. Hamon itself is going to be the exact comparison, but completely different as far as flavors. This is just going to be a different part of the, the animal. So. so what's really nice too is saltiness in, in foods help to sort of balance out a heavy tannin in wine. And Cabernet has a tendency to have be a little bit heavy on the tannin side. So one of the things that I noticed when I tried the the ham and then I tried the wine is that it really, I mean, it even softened it out even more, mm -hmm. which I think is really interesting. And I think the paella will really, um, I can serve a little bit so you can try the, the paella with the wine as well. Um, I'm just going to scrape this all up, get all the sokorat, which is that caramelized rice off the bottom. Um, so is the rice cooked first, sort of? 
you said it's caramelized in the bottom first? Uh, it's caramelized, so it's uh, cooked on top of the stove, and then it is finished in the oven. Can um, you guys see this? The Amazing. Stock, the stock for this is cooked for three hours um, before it's even ready to be used for a paella. Okay. The sofrito, which is all the flavoring um, in the paella, uh, is cooked for three hours as well. And then it's all combined um, into the paella, so. So you can see us having the paella. If you would like to have some paella for yourself, you can either go to Disfania in Princeton or you can join us here on October 5th for our wine dinner because they will be preparing the paella here. So you could, we're talking a little bit about the preparation, but that's really fun. You guys will be able to see it for yourself. So we do have the paella, um, paella dinner at the winery coming up. Um, so we will be cooking paella here on site. Um, I believe the winery is doing a nice wine pairing with it as well. We'll be pairing wines with each course. So I guess we're going to, the menu is on our website, but we're going to be starting out with maybe some traditional tapas. Um, yep. And then we're going to be doing a couple different salads. We're going to have some salads, some hot tapas, cold tapas. We're going to have meats and cheese as well. So these wonderful cheese that you see here tonight, most of them will be here um, for the wine dinner. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also have the other wine dinner that's going to be coming up as yep. well uh, in November. Uh, at the Spagna Princeton, so if you don't uh, have tickets for that or you can't make that one, you can certainly get tickets for the November one. So it's going to be a little different format, but really nice. Uh, hopefully the weather is gorgeous. We'll have the fall leaves and the terrace yeah. and the and nice Please, beautiful. if it's a nice day, we're going to do our wine dinner outside that day. So we did it in October mm -hmm. last year. We did it in, in really nice dinner outside was, on the... It was beautiful. Perfect fall afternoon. So please come and join us, but make sure you get tickets because it's reservations only. Or if it's, if it's cold, we'll have the fireplace going, too. So go. either way, it'll be a great day here. So I get what you're saying, too. It's interesting. The rice, I guess, maybe from being caramelized a little bit, has like a little bit of a nuttiness to it. You do get like all the spices, but it's not overly spiced. Yeah, it's mostly going to be savory flavors, and that's really um, the big misconception with a lot of Spanish food. Is it's not really about spice, about adding hot peppers or, you know, a spicy paprika to everything or overdoing it with saffron. It's really about getting all the flavors from the shrimp, the, the flavors from the sea bass, the flavors from the onions and the garlic and the sofrito and the peppers. So I mean, really I think it nice. could go either way. I mean, I think that if you're yeah, pairing with liking either, white wines, yeah. if you, that's what you're feeling that night, I mean, this would pair beautifully with that too. It'd be great. You could go it. either I mean, way. Yeah, because it's got a little bit of the spiceness to it yeah. where the acidity on the on the Vidal is going to cut through the spice on, the, on this. It's got, it'd be great, either one of them. Absolutely. So just a reminder, just to sort of wrap up a little bit everything tonight, we, um, our next virtual vines is going to be on November the 20th, and we're going to be, it's our Thanksgiving edition, and so we're going to be doing our new 2013 Malbec and our 2013 Dry Riesling. Both of those will pair beautifully with anything that you're having for the holiday meal. And by all means, please buy your tickets for the October 5th wine dinner here with Despagna. Scott will be here as well as myself. We'll be talking about the wine and food pairings and the chefs will be here preparing the paella and talking a little bit about the food as well. And then the event again on the 18th of November. If you can't make it here on the 5th, you can join us there at Despagna in Princeton for that event. I'm looking forward to that one. And yeah, and if you're looking for something fun to do this weekend, come out see us at the winery for our Fall Harvest Festival. Very exciting. It's something we look forward to every year. It's yeah. hard to believe this is our fourth year. Yeah, hay rides. We'll be going around the hay rides. Uh, I'll be doing that. My father will be doing the bee tours uh, with that. He's got a new observation hive that he'll be demonstrating. That'll be nice. Um, there's plenty of honey here for him as well. And I'll be doing winery tours. Winery tours. The, People love the winery yeah, tours. If yeah. you're ever look if interested you in more of what's If you what's haven't on. been here since the new tank building has been finished, it is now finished and it's ready to go and harvest up there is just going wonderfully compared to last year out in the back. Yeah, um, you'll be really be able to see yes, everything in action yeah, up there. Everything is up there, everything is temperature controlled, everything has been great this year with the harvest. Everything, all the fruit has been coming in, has been beautiful, nice and clean, and the fermentations right now in the, up in the tank room is going great. And we've been checking the weather, it is going to be sunny and 80. Yes. Perfection this weekend. Perfect weekend. So please get out. Michael, what is your favorite menu item to pair with cab? Uh, my favorite From menu, NJ Wine Girl. <laughs> I'd say my favorite wine uh, menu item to pair with the cab is probably going to be the paella. Um, 
If you come down to Despagna, we do have a Despagna paella, which is going to be an all-meat paella. Uh, I think that's going to pair beautifully with it. Uh, it's my favorite. Um, that's got the uh, the spicy chorizo in it. Uh, so it's got a little bit more spice. It's got the um, Iberico pork loin. So it's going to be that 50% grain-fed, 50% acorn-fed black pig. Um, so it's got a, a nice buttery flavor from, from the, the fat and the pig um, and the acorn. And then it also has chicken as well. So um, that's the, probably my favorite pick to pair with cat. Nice. Now, do you have things on the menu that are not spicy for those who cannot handle the spices? We have, we have a lot of stuff that's uh, not spicy on the menu. Uh, we have a lot of vegetarian options as well, so even though Great. the culture of Spain is a lot of meats, uh, we do have a lot of vegetarian options, so we're, we're pretty excited to, to be able to provide to our vegetarian clientele as Excellent. well. Excellent. Yeah. Great. Nice. Well, thank you guys again, Kelsey, thank you. Michael. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming out and joining us tonight and Thanks bringing all this us. amazing food. It, it just goes to show, I mean, it, it pairs beautifully with the wines, and it just goes to show you know, that the food is made, sorted to pair with wine, and it brings out the best in both, in my opinion. Yeah, no, that's just a, everything is just traditional. Everything is yep. the food, the wine, everything is tr just traditional and very flavorful. And thank you for everybody for joining us tonight. We hope you will join us in November for our next virtual vines. And until next time, we'll see you later. Thank you.